Hi, everybody. Welcome to this week's episode of Hashtag No Filter with me, Rich Gabindra. We are talking about how you can change your life, find a passion, go with it, and see success. Stay tuned, everybody. Welcome back to Hashtag No Filter, everybody. I'm Richka Bindra. I'd like to introduce a very special guest today. He is an international artist. He's considered the next Andy Warhol. His work is fabulous. He's done some work for some phenomenal people. We'll get into that. I'd like to introduce Daniel Mazzone. Welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. We're really, really excited. We also have our fantabulous, I'm all about fantabulous today, sorry, team panelists. We have Cassandra, we have Stefan, and we have Nitka. Hi, guys. Hi, guys. Um, <laughs> so, Daniel, I know a lot of people think art is something that you can't necessarily make a profession out of and if you do it's very hard yeah, is this always, true you're always going to hear something like that yeah and especially growing up you know you always hear even from people in school you know they always tell you to you know do doctor something lawyer. like you gotta be a doctor or a lawyer yeah. or get into finance and yeah. you know i started I, I always wanted to be an artist but I, I think i got kind of a little bit deterred from that a little bit but I uh, always wanted to be an artist and I always created and you know ever since I was a kid my mom was a stained glass artist and oh, she wow. did porcelain as well and since I was a kid I always did it with her and it was always a dream to be an artist. Um, it ran in the blood almost. You oh, yeah say. totally okay. and I have a lot of aunts and uncles who are artists as well but you know I think the main thing to do is just not listen to anybody because people it doesn't matter what you do in life people are always going to tell you that something is difficult, but everything is difficult. They're going to have an opinion about everything. Yeah, yeah, I mean, listen, everything is difficult, whether it's art or a lawyer or a doctor. Mm -hmm. I mean, all you have to do is give 100% anything Absolutely. you do. And, and, and if you do, so your dreams will come true. And I think what's um, inspiring about your story, and I think that's why we have you on No Filter as a success story for this episode for our teens, is that you kind of took um, hardships in your life and you turned it around. Right. So when I was reading on you, it said that at 15, you left your home, you went through some personal issues, you mm -hmm. took your own space and went mm -hmm. away. And most teens today kind of, you know, resort to, they go into sort of the darker side of life. You know, they can go into drugs, they can resort yeah. into alcohol, they get into mental health issues. So how did you kind of build yourself and say, okay, I'm going to find sort of, um, you know, solace or I'm going to find strength in something like my art that I love. And right. how did you take that journey? Uh, it was difficult at first, I mean, obviously, because, you know, you go through day to day on how to survive, how to find food and where to sleep. But I, I think that the experience in general was, you know, you, you learn a lot about people and where they come from and you understand a little bit more of life. And I wouldn't give it up for anything now because it's made me into a better person and, to, you know, just, just understanding how people work and, and why they do things. and. That's sort of the reason my artwork is so detailed mm -hmm. because, you know, people, a lot of times people will pass you on the street and say they just see someone there begging for money right. or like, you know, they're, everyone's always quick to judge, right? But you don't really question how they got there or why they're there and there's always a reason. So, I lost my train of thought. That's okay. You're basically talking about how every single person kind of, you know, has their journey. Yeah, so everybody's quick to judge you and nobody questions. So the reason I make my artwork so detailed is because I hope through, you know, my artwork I can teach people to stop and analyze everything in life. And not be like so quick to judge. The way they stop and analyze my artwork, maybe they'll learn to do that in their everyday life as well. Cassandra, have you ever as a teen, I know with like your friends and now you're leaving high school going to college, you're entering more of the real world, have you kind of had friends that have gone through sort of, you know, um, issues and used sort of a point as a success to sort of turn their life? Mm -hmm. Or kind of have you seen the opposite side of it where they find yeah. it hard to find that push? I've definitely seen it go both ways. I've seen people who have been in very bad situations, bad family dynamics or whatever their situation is, and they do let it get them down. Mm -hmm. But I think what people have to keep in mind is there are success sto stories such as yours yeah. that people were in bad situations and they found something that made them happy, like almost like an output, like a, an escape from reality, mm -hmm. then that's what they pursued. Yeah, totally. Did you use it as an escape? Like how did you kind of go from, okay, you know, my personal life is not necessarily the best at this moment. Mm -hmm. I'm 15 years old. I'm out on my yeah, own. Yeah. How am I going to make art in an actual profession? How am I going to turn this into something that I love and actually generate sort of money from it? You know what? Actually, I've, at first I had no intentions of generating money really? at all. Um, okay. Actually, I got a regular job and I had a job and I worked every day. And um, 
I remember calling my best friend and I said, I, I can't picture this being my life, you know, going to a job that I didn't really love. And, you know, is this it? Like, you go to work, you come home, and then that's it, right? Were you doing art, like, at that point as sort of a pastime, just as your hobby? Yeah, okay, just sort of on the side. I was just doing, like, stuff here and there. But then um, I had stopped for a few years. At that point, I wasn't really doing much. And I said to my uh, friend, I said, oh, I can't believe this is it. And I ended up watching this movie on this guy who became an artist, who wasn't an artist. He just started, I think he was around 40, and he became very successful. And it wasn't the successful part that turned me on. It was like, oh, man, I should get back into art and really do it full time like I used to. So I did it, and um, I was so happy. I would go to work, and I'd sit there and draw what my next pieces were going to be. And I was so excited, I couldn't even focus on the work I had to do. <laughs> and. Um, you know, a friend of mine came by and he saw my artwork and he said, you know, do you mind if I hang it in my restaurant? I said, yeah, sure. I said, you know, but I don't think anybody would want to buy it. And he called me a few days later and someone purchased it. And that was your first, was that your first um, purchased artwork? That was my first purchase, yeah. Oh and I, I didn't think it would sell because no. there was just, there was no yeah. price tag, right? Oh and uh, I think right there it had nothing to do with the money. It had to, it had to do with more of the fact that all those years of myself, picturing myself being an artist and visualizing it, it had finally come true, and uh, I called my boss and I quit my job the next day. Were you scared at that point still to I, do no, it, honestly? No, actually, at first, I quit my job, and I got off the phone, and I said, oh, my God, what did I just do? Yeah, <laughs> you just hit, you're like, uh, yeah. I hope this works out. So I did it, and I was scared because all of a sudden there's no more paycheck coming in. But you know what? I, I took the chances, which is, which this is what you have to do. You have to take a chance if you really believe in something. And the next week, I sold the last four pictures I had. Oh, my God. So, and then literally, it hasn't stopped since. Okay. So, Stefan, have you ever kind of considered doing something that's out of the stereotypical norm? Well, yeah, I think that as teenagers, well, we all have expectations for us. Like, our, your parents want you to go to school, probably go to university. But I think some of us want to do what we think we should be doing. Like, for you, it was art. Um, some of us want to get into maybe sports or maybe want to get into, like, cooking or something. Something, mm -hmm. out, something of out of the typical expectations. Out of the typical expectations, right. yeah. And do you feel like there's a fear to do that because you're answerable to all these kind of people behind you? Yeah, I feel like that uh, now our parents make us kind of think, even like school, that if you don't become like a certain profession, like a doctor or something, mm -hmm. it's going to be hard for you to like live your life or be successful. But I think that different people have different definitions of and success. And I think that's something that's for generations and will probably go on for generations yeah. because I'm sure he felt it, well, my course, parents felt it, it will course. always be there. The, so. the one thing I would agree with, I mean, I think every. I think what it, it is important is always to ha let's say you have a passion for something. Yeah. I think it's always good to have a plan yep. B just as a backup in life. So. Perfect. So on the other side of the break, we're going to look at some of the work Daniel has done. We're going to talk about kind of how detailed he gets. What is what is his thought process and inspiration behind it? Stay tuned, everybody. Welcome back to Hashtag No Filter, everybody. I'm Rich Kabinder, and we are talking with a phenomenal artist, Daniel Mazzone, about his work, his journey, and how you can take a passion and actually turn it into a profession. Daniel, I'm going to show some of our viewers on screen um, some of the images of the amazing artwork you do, the detail that actually goes into the work. How long does it take you to create a piece, on average? A couple hundred hours. Oh my God! A yeah, couple hundred depends, hours. Because there's always the research, and then there's the work that goes into it, collecting stuff for the pieces and that sort of stuff. So. In your career, how long have you been doing artwork for now? As a profession or in general? As a profession. It's five years now. Okay. So on the screen is a piece that um, our viewers can actually see. Can you tell me a little bit about that piece? Yeah. So this piece was made for Jose Batista. Does anyone know who that is? Because. Yeah. yeah, I'm I don't sure think people. Know. <laughs> I'm joking. Um, he plays for the Blue Jays, so that's very exciting for a lot of our Torontonians yeah. and Canadians that are watching the show. So tell me what it was like a, to create work for him, b how that happened, and c how long it took you. Uh, he's super nice, actually. Um, a friend of mine had posted a picture I made of Babe Ruth uh, last year on Instagram, and he messaged me and said, "Oh, Jose Batista wants to meet up with you." Were you like, "Okay, are you joking?" Were you like, "Hey, pretty much?" Waste my time? Exactly, exactly what I wrote <laughs> back. I said, "You got to be joking." Uh, and then we went to meet him the next day, and uh, super, super nice. And um, I'm actually doing a charity with him. Uh, I, I'm donating to his charity actually this summer. Amazing. Um, 
So he wanted the one piece, and then he came to my show in Miami for Art Basel, and uh, he ended up buying seven pieces, and then he commissioned me to do Jordan, and uh, I'm making another one of him, of him now. Wow. Uh, a, a giant baseball card, so that's exciting Very for me to make. Cool. I'm just waiting for him to send some pictures of uh, when he was a kid. Um, we'll let him focus on the game now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We yeah, won't pressurize yeah, yeah. him too I, hard, right? It's funny you say that because I was going to text him today. I was like, ah, maybe I shouldn't ask him. You're any like, questions I'm going to leave him alone. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to show the next few um, images throughout the screen as well for our viewers to see. Can you tell me a little bit about this one? This one I really like. This one gives me the Andy Warhol inspiration. Yeah, you know what? Um, a lot of my pictures, they tell a story of either the character or something that's going on in the world or a story I want to tell. This one was sort of uh, a story for me. I, ever since I was a kid, I loved comic books. Okay. And I always wanted to create my own comic characters and this sort of thing. So this is uh, number one of a comic book series that I'm, okay. or comic series that I'm doing. So something like that, for example, how long would it take you on average to make from conceptualizing the idea to actually um, having it completed? Well, it's about 150 hours to oh 120 my God. hours. Yeah. Oh my God, yeah. 150 hours. Yeah. That is crazy. So I That's mean, our third picture up mm -hmm. on the screen. This one's really nice as well. I like the use of all the different colors. Do you ever kind of get, um, do you ever hit like a point, they always say like an artist block where sometimes you're like, oh, I'm in the middle of this, how do I finish it or what do I do? Do you um, hit that point? Not, uh, not really, actually. That one there, George Washington, for example, I have uh, in that picture original newspapers about uh, George Washington. Wow. From, uh, I believe, the from 1800s or something. So it must be taking you a while to get that kind of material Yeah, too, so right? the thing is I have stacks of newspapers home by home from the moon landing from Malcolm X to... Amazing. Yeah, so there's always inspiration in things I see or newspapers I collect, so I don't really have too many blocks. There's, I'm always inspired by different something things. Something or the other keeps Yeah, there's going. always a story to tell. I mean, from things I've learned in the past or people that inspire me or something that's going to happen. I, I, have, Nitka, I know you always think about different ways to get inspired. Has artwork yeah. ever inspired you? I mean, definitely. I mean, I try to look around, you know, at my school. All our walls are just covered with artwork that, you know, different people from our, like, our students have made. And, you know, every day I look at them and I'm actually, like, I'm motivated in life and seeing, like, oh my gosh, these people, like, students, some of them are younger than me even, have done such amazing things. Like, why should I be scared? Mm -hmm. You know, to do anything. It's funny, you said students have done amazing things. And I thought of something, Daniel, can art be learned? Because a lot of people say, oh, I'm an artist and I was, you know, naturally born and I was able to pick up yeah. a paintbrush. And then some people say, no, you can harness any talent you want. Like you can learn, for example, water paints or you can learn to play with something. Right. Where do you kind of, like, is that true? With art? I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to say it's a little different. I mean, mm -hmm. it's, it's to say, like, could one person be a stockbroker? Probably not if mm -hmm. they're bad at math, mm -hmm. right? I think if you really try hard at something, you could become it. But I think I think the important thing is, if you're passionate about something, you'll be able you'll to be able find. to do it. Right? Yeah. Because someone who can't paint, they're not really passionate about it because they just haven't done it since they were a kid. To build it. Yeah. Out. So and I think it's all about passion, forever. not trying to do something you're not supposed mm -hmm. to do. We're gonna look at the next picture right now on our on our screen for our viewers to see as well. So let's bring that up. This one's really nice. Can you tell us a little bit about this? It's a little bit more different. Yeah, actually uh, this one was uh, you know kind of inspiration with all the stuff that's going on in the world with the violence and that sort of stuff mm -hmm. and war. And it's actually really sad. So I made this picture. It's called uh, Fight for Love and uh, you can see the little arrow coming yeah. out of there. But it's made out of all um, famous love stories from comic books. Everyone's kissing and all that sort of stuff. So, Beautiful. Uh, yeah, I think it was something sort of I nice like that do. your artwork has a specific story behind it. I like that. Yeah. I'm somebody that likes to see something that has a purpose or a meaning to it. So I think that's really, really nice for our viewers as well to yeah. see. Let's look at our next one. Can you tell us about this one a little bit, Daniel? Yeah, this is me working in a studio. Just uh, I'm doing I'm doing glass work on top of my work, and yeah, that's me getting cool. dirty. Is that your studio? Uh, it's one of them, yeah. Very, very cool. Okay. And are you still Toronto based now? I am. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. So people that want to get your work and they reach out to you on your social media of and course. on your website, they know that you're accessible here. 100%. And, you know, you can meet with them personally. And yeah. I think that's nice as well. This one is my favorite. I, I really like this one. one. Loves, I love this loves, piece. Loves, it's loves this like, one. I yeah. feel like everyone takes something different. I feel like when I looked at it a few days ago, I was really, really tired and I took it as an inspiration. Like it yeah. gave me kind of like a go, go, go. Uh, I think people like the intensity of yeah. it. And I, what's Love nice it. about this piece is that everybody, you can take something different on any mood you are. Like when I was happy, I looked at it and yeah. I'm like, I'm fierce. Like you can pull yeah, something yeah. different from this. People and it's cool. were obsessed with this picture yeah. of the show. I can definitely yeah. see yeah. that. 
Um, this is our last one, so can you tell us a little bit about this one? I think it's really cute. What the picture is or the artwork? Both. <laughs> Actually, this is just uh, something I took for my website, but the, uh, the picture in the background is just, uh, I believe people go through every day rushing too much and they never stop mm -hmm. to smell the roses We're or the, the flowers. Go -go. So this is my, you know, picture of flowers and there's comic books in there, there's a little piece of me. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah. So does all your work have a trace of your comics, like comics there's in them? There's a little bit of comics in almost every picture. Okay, because yeah. that touches yeah, everything. Yeah, it's a little bit of me in every picture. Okay. Um, in terms of passion, I know he's mentioned that in a lot of his, um, in his talk and that kind of inspired his artwork and we can see the success from it. Have you guys ever kind of considered doing art as a profession or do you still feel like there's a kind of almost not a not a taboo but like oh my god you're going to be an artist yeah um i think you ha like you were saying you have to be passionate about it i've never like i love art but i don't have the talent to do art right mm -hmm. but my passion anita's was mm -hmm. media so that's something that we wanted to do but i definitely think it's so impressive how you like overcame everything and you became an artist because it has that kind of stigma around it that you yeah. know like the struggling artist stigma yeah. and i just think it's amazing how you made like such a successful career out of it yeah but i think you know what the most important part for me was right from the beginning after i said okay this is something i'm going to do i swear everything i visualized has come true you just have you to, didn't turn back. No, you yeah. have to picture it happening. You have to tell yourself, this is what's going to happen. I am going to do this. I am going to be yeah, you know, you were motivated the best I can. And you put 100% yeah. into it. That's it, and it happens. On the other side of the break, we're going to talk about some inspirational um, ideas that Daniel can give us for all our teams walking, watching across the York region. Stay tuned, everybody. And welcome back on our last segment of Hashtag No Filter. We are talking with international uh, artist Daniel Mazzone about his work, his inspiration, and this idea of passion. Daniel, a lot of our teens want to be artists. They actually want to get into the field of art. They want to get into the creative space. Yeah. Um, what tips can you give them? Well, I mean, a, a lot of the schooling I learned was uh, not only self-taught, but my mother was a teacher as well. Right. So I think I had the opportunity to have a parent that did that. But... I would say, yeah, take some classes and then definitely go to school and read a lot of books and, and uh, just practice, practice, practice. Because there's a whole business now on actually, um, you know, schools that are of based course, on yeah. artwork. And yeah. so do you actually feel these things are important? Like you can actually go yeah. and get a few skills for your art that, um, you know, whether it be stained glass painting or right, watercolors, right. whatever the avenue is. Yeah. Do you feel like these institutions actually add something? A hundred percent. Because you know what? Knowledge doesn't occupy space. Yeah. So, well said. you know, the more you learn, the more you know. And the more you know, the more confident you are in your work, right? So it always becomes better and better. And just like me, I, I do it every day. And I, I end up getting better and better because I'm constantly practicing. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I think school is definitely important it's a, for sure. It's something they can yeah, use. Absolutely. Um, yeah. I had a question for you. Um, I've seen your, uh, your pictures and uh, your artwork, and it's so beautiful. Um, did you get any um, education or, like, teachings uh, other than, like, your uh, mother? No, uh, other than my mother, I learned everything on my own. Wow, that's great. Yeah. yeah. I just sort of figured it out. It was, it was, uh, you know. I remember all the things I learned from stained glass, mm -hmm. and then there was a, a mixture of me messing around, and then I just sort of developed my own technique, mm -hmm. and uh, with lots and lots of practice, I just mm -hmm. I've mastered it, and, and people seem to like That's it. That's amazing. So. Yeah. yeah. So, right. That is really cool. Now I feel like I can't lift a paintbrush for my life. <laughs> I can't draw. I can't draw st stick figures. Yeah. I can't do anything. So people say, oh my God, you're in media, you're creative. I'm like, I have no creativity because I don't see it. And yeah. any work I do, I have no ability to draw watercolor paint versus yeah. like my mom and sister are so good at it. And I'm like, I wish I could be an artist like yeah. you guys. I tried to take art and I got kicked out of art. In art and I wish I could play an instrument. <laughs> the see, piano is something I always want right? to play. We my can. fingers don't move that way. I can't do it. I've tried instruments. It doesn't see, everyone work. Everyone has one talent, but they don't have something else, you know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I had a question for you. Yeah. So we're kind of all in the stage where we're about to leave high school and like go yeah. on with our lives. Can you tell us like maybe a tip of like confidence, how we can like want it, like how to give us confidence to pursue what we want? I was going to ask you the same question yeah. because it's a very vulnerable place to put yourself as an of artist course. when your work is out to being judged, right? Of course. Millions of people look at it and you're putting sort of a personal part of you in every piece and you're giving it out and you're like, now it's in the public space. It's not, it's kind of no longer yours in a way because you're letting the entire world take it in. Yeah. So how do you build that confidence? You just have to believe in your work. And, you know, Andy Warhol even said, he said, you know, don't worry about what people think mm -hmm. about your artwork, just make more artwork. Because if you sit there and worry about what people are going to think or what they're going to look at, you'll never create anything. Yeah. Obviously, 
naturally you're going to be, mm -hmm. you want people to love your stuff, but I think if you focus on it too much, it's just, you just have to get your vision out, and I think that's the most important mm -hmm. part. When you go to exhibitions and stuff, you know, right. all over the place, and your work is out there, do you almost feel like that nervousness when someone's, like, asking you about your work and they're judging it? You still feel it even today after yeah. so many years? Yeah, because, okay. I mean, you're, you're putting yourself out there. It's, uh, you know, like now I'm doing, I'm working on my show for our Basil, which is eight months away, and I've already been working for two months. So when you work almost a whole year, day after day after day after so many hours, when you get there, you hope that people are going to love your stuff. And, uh, you know, it, it, it always works out because if you just believe in it, it just happens. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Stephen, you were going to ask a question. Yeah, um, so when you started out as an artist, right, obviously you quit your job. Were you, were you worried that you were going to succeed at first with your art? No. No? You always was, <laughs> no, obviously I was scared when I first when I quit and there wasn't a paycheck coming in. But like I said, the week after, I ended up selling those last and I said, Okay, this is real. So mm -hmm. It gave you the yeah. accelerator to yeah. keep going. Yeah, it was definitely a, a confidence boost. I think more yeah. than even passion, what I take from this is that hard work is equally as important definitely, because you yeah. can be passionate yeah. about something, but I think the amount of hours you put into your work, the fact yeah. that you work you know, months in advance and you've put everything into it, I think it shows yeah. that you mm -hmm. need to A, envision something. I'm a firm, yeah. firm believer of it. Everything yeah. in my life that I've ever gotten is because I've actually envisioned it and I've thought it through, yeah. like pictured it every single day yeah. happening and it has happened in so many mm -hmm. different ways. Um, and I think hard work. I think yeah. that's so, so important yeah, because definitely. passion I mean, can only take you so far. Yeah, people see the pretty artwork, but sometimes they don't realize the actual work you have to do, and then I work, I work really hard. Yeah, and as they say, like, mm -hmm. whatever you give to the world, that's exactly what you get back. 100%, yeah. And I always say whatever it is, um, you know, to our viewers as well, that's why I chose the story of Daniel today because I think it's so inspiring for people to not only look at conventional professions, but also non-conventional professions such mm -hmm. as this, and kind of A, learn to respect them, B, um, be confident in whatever it is you have a passion for, take it, go with it. Um, you know, quitting your job probably was the hardest thing you can do immediately, yeah. and you know, look at where it's taken you today. Yeah. And I think the hard work is definitely something no one can take away from you with mm -hmm. your talent. Um, and same thing for cast, for example, in Nitka, I know you guys love media, it's a profession mm -hmm. you guys want to go into, and it is a tough profession, you know. Mm -hmm. It is so competitive, just like with anything else. With his artwork, you must be feeling the competition every day when you course, create work, yeah. right? Somebody trying to do the same work as you, or somebody trying to copy your style. There's always those, mm -hmm. those um, intricacies in any job, but I think as long as we um, keep our head on our shoulders and we kind of keep that drive, I think yeah. it's really important. Is there anything you want to tell our viewers before we um, say goodbye? Yeah, don't listen to anybody. <laughs> Follow your dream. Don't let anybody take you down. And, uh, you know, you got to give 100% and work, Daniel, and work hard. Before we go really quick, your yeah. work is available on the website, your yeah. personal website, which is on our screen um, for viewers to get. It's also on our um, website, hashtag no filter, so you can check that out. What is your plan for the next year? Uh, for the next year, uh, December, uh, November 30th is my show in Miami in Art for Art Basel. And then uh, after that, I'm working on some stuff for Las Vegas, I think. So then you're going to be back to creating. Back to creating. Back, always creating. The creative cycle yeah, never ends. constantly going. Okay. And yeah. um, I think it's really cool. I asked him on the break, and he said, I said, do you still live in Toronto? And you said, yes. And I think it's really cool because a lot of artists that have gotten big internationally have come to a point where now it's like to kind of meet them to be like, okay, create this for me. It's almost impossible. You have to go through like 7 million different people. Yeah, and it's like, yeah. this is my agent, and this is my agent's friend, and this is my yeah. assistant's assistant. Is it still possible if someone wants to meet you and actually like have you create work? Are you still that accessible today? No, of course, of course. I, I have a management team, but I always tell them, if anybody wants to meet me, I definitely meet them. Which I think is really nice that yeah. you still kept that humbleness. You don't but I let people away. message me personally as well. That's Even wonderful. on my, like my, uh, my page for Instagram, uh, for Facebook, you know, a lady asked if I would meet her two children who were, uh, she had two boys, one was a photographer, one was an artist, and she said, when you come to Miami, they'd love to meet you, and I said, absolutely, you know, so I, you're always I always want to be in back. touch with people, yeah, okay. it's important I think that's for me. amazing. Plus, I can learn something from them as well. That's really true. Yeah. Thank you so much, Daniel, for Thanks. coming on our show, Thanks, for inspiring guys. all our teams. Thank you. Check yeah. out his work, it is phenomenal, and watch Hashtag No Filter next Wednesday. Thanks, everyone. Thank you so much, Daniel. Daniel.